everyone. Thank you for listening to the third webinar as part of our 2024 CKF webinar series. This session is a little different as we will celebrate our 2023 CKF award winners and their inspirational stories. We will also be announcing the winners of our 2024 CKF awards during this webinar. Uh, my name is Anna Morgan Pilardi. For anyone that doesn't know, I am the Pro Program and Communications Director for the Chris Kluge Foundation, otherwise known as CKF. First, if you are interested in any of the other topics we will be discussing during this year's webinar series, head to chrisklugfoundation.org slash CKF webinar series. If you have any questions for today's speaker, please direct them to info at chrisklugfoundation.org. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce today's speakers. First, uh, I'd like to welcome the 2023 Hero Award winner and donor mother, Katrina Fountain. Thanks for joining us, Katrina. Uh, next, uh, we have our 2023 Bounce Back Give Back Award winner and living liver transplant recipient, Dave Galbensky. Thanks for joining us, Dave. Awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. Unfortunately, our 2023 Community Champion Award winner, Maria Fernanda Filizola, could not join us today for family reasons. Um, we will definitely miss her and wish her all of the best, uh, but family is most important. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Maria's journey as a caregiver and Donate Life Northwest employee, please check out our CKF website under CKF Awards and then previous winners. Um, so let's dive right into it. Dave, I'm going to start with you. Can you walk us through your transplant journey and what that looked like for you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Happy to do so. Um, you know, my journey started uh, towards transplant in, uh, in 2013. I was uh, 44 years old, uh, married with a 13-year-old daughter, and I got a diagnosis of a rare autoimmune disease uh, called primary sclerosing cholangitis, PSC, which coincidentally uh, was the same autoimmune disease that uh, Chris Glue had, uh, which was uh, kind of that initial connection point. I didn't know it at the time, but as things evolved, it was really interesting how the universe works. Uh, so it goes back to, to 2013. And with that autoimmune disease, uh, it can progress quickly over months, years, decades. Uh, in my case, it took about six years to progress from diagnosis uh, to end stage liver disease. And I was uh, on the transplant list on February 14th, 2019, uh, which is kind of crazy, right? Valentine's Day. And always about transplant, right? It's uh, getting on a transplant list is a pretty big thing, right? Because it allowed me to then say, wow, I get an opportunity to gain access to an organ to save my life, right? But it also means I'm entering end-stage liver disease. So it's kind of that interesting journey, right? Uh, and so that was a big moment. And tied to the Chris Glute Foundation, um, Chris wrote that great book. Uh, and that was one of the first things when I went on transplant list to begin to explore the whole journey. And it was a very inspirational book for me. And, you know, interesting that that was my first intersection with this amazing foundation that has been around, what, almost 21 years now, right, Anna? Yeah. That's yeah, incredible to see, you know, how long it's been around, you know, it's it's amazing. And, uh, and so, you know, when you get on the transplant list, um, you have two avenues when it's for a kidney or liver. We have the opportunity to uh, get a organ from the deceased organ registry. So all of those out there, make sure you're checking the box at the DMV and Secretary of State, whatever it's called in your state, uh, to be registered uh, to give that second chance at life. And then for kidney and liver, uh, where there's 100,000 people on, about 90,000 kidneys, about 10,000 liver, you get this other avenue, which is amazing, which is the living organ donor avenue, right? Where people can step up and save a life today. We have the technology. The cure is there. We can make it happen. Uh, and so I was very fortunate that uh, my brother-in-law, Mark Divis, uh, saved my life. He's my wife's younger sister's husband. Wow. And he put his name in to be my living donor and went through the medical qualification process. Uh, and about seven months after uh, being on the transplant list, I received the call from Karen, his wife, and, and Mark that said, hey, come on over. We live five minutes from him. 
we got we got something we want to share with you. And we were coming home um, Wednesday night after uh, my wife and I were uh, in our church choir at the time. And so that come on over. We know you have finished practice. Come on over. So we thought it was just a stopover. And uh, we stopped over. And lo and behold, they said, I'm going to be your living donor. And, I, of course, tears, hugs, smiles, incredible joy, right? Because I couldn't believe that uh, that was happening. And, of course, at that moment, Mark said, hey, um, you know, I'm thinking – you know, November, December, you know, we're picking some dates. And I go, hey, you know what? I think I can clear my calendar. <laughs> I think I can make that date work. You pick it. I'll be there. Uh, and so we settled on uh, November uh, 25th, uh, 2019, uh, which we all know becomes a day that is so big in the lives of recipients, right? It's our second chance at life. It's our anniversary. It's our new birth date. However you want to uh, call it that. And that then became my second chance at life. And really so grateful for uh, Mark, all living donors, all donor families, right? Because they're the reason why we're alive today. And our goal is to pay it forward. So that's my transplant journey. We'll talk a little bit more about post-transplant later and what we did, but so grateful to have been part of this year-long journey. Uh, with the Chris Kluge Foundation and honored to be on this webinar today to recognize, I think, the 2024 winners. How cool is that? <laughs> Thank you, Dave. That was amazing. I can't imagine how exciting that surprise was. That's a huge surprise. Probably the best one there is. Um, but yes, we're super excited. We will be announcing our award winners in a little bit. And it's super excited to talk more about what you've done since your transplant. Um, but let's move to Katrina. Um, it took incredible strength to make the decision to become a donor mom. Can you tell us about you and your son Jaleel's story um, becoming a donor family? Absolutely. Um, so my journey started, I want to say now about 24 years. I hate saying that year because this makes me sound a little old, but <laughs> 24 years ago, um, I was 18 years old. I found that I was pregnant. And um, of course, being 18, when I found that I was pregnant, I already knew where Jalil was going to go to college, who his first play date was, what his first outfit at the hospital was going to be. I knew it all. Couldn't tell me anything. Um, and I had Jalil on August 4th of 2000 and not knowing that I only had five weeks with him. On September 11th of 2000, woke up, took Jalil to the doctor for the first checkup. Um, doctor came back, said, you're doing a great job as a young mom. Keep up the good work. Brought him home. And that night, Jalil stopped breathing. We don't know what happened. We don't know why. Rushed him to the hospital. Waited outside. It seemed like the longest moment of my life. And the doctor came out and said, um, mom, normally we give three shocks to the heart. This time we gave five and we was able to get the heart to start beating again, but he was not breathing on his own. So he had to be put on a ventilator. Um, that week was a little rough. It was a lot of rough. Um, me being young, not knowing what's going on, confused, you know, mad, um, scared. Um, but the doctors and the nurses, they were amazing and they got me through it. And the end of the week came and, um, the doctors came in and said, mom, we're going to have to do, uh, we're going to do one more test to see if there's any brain activity and to see if he's going to be able to breathe on his own. And, um, after that, you're going to, uh, maybe have to make a decision. At that time, a advocate from Live on New York came in and um, spoke to us about organ donation. And of course, us being young, I had it checked off as I wanted to be an organ donate a donor, but no one talks about it in their family around the kitchen table while they're having dinner. Yeah, I'm signed up to be an organ donor if, you know, God forbid anything happens. So just really not knowing anything about organ donation. But when I tell you the advocate came in with such peace in the moment of such a scared, chaotic moment for me and my family and really connected with us. At first, my dad, of course, being big papa bear said no, but he was being protective over his daughter and um, of the space that we was in. But something in my spirit and my heart just said yes. 
Um, so as we were getting ready to say goodbye, they did the test and everything, and we were getting ready to say goodbye. My aunt's putting on red lipstick, kissing the bottom of his feet, and we're cutting his hair up to save it. A team of doctors came rushing into the room <clears throat> and gently pushed us to the side. Um, and we're standing in the corner, confused, not knowing what's happened. They're just all over Jalil's body, like, oh my God, it's hard. It's amazing. It's great. And they're all happy and excited. And then one of the doctors kind of looked up and read the room. And he was like, mom, I am so sorry, but there is a two month old baby boy in Kings County Hospital. And if he doesn't get a heart, he is not gonna make it. Right there, I knew that uh, when my spirit told me to say yes, I understand why now. So um, we didn't get a chance to say, to finish our goodbyes. They really had to um, get this heart over to him. So, we watched him walk down the hallway. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, um, life kind of kept going on. About two months uh, after that, I received a letter in the mail from Live on New York. They let me know that Jalil Hart went to a two-month-old baby boy. And he also saved an 11-month-old baby girl with his liver. And um, still young. Life is still going, um, had more kids, um, but it came to a point, as you can imagine, my son was only five weeks. So I stopped saying his name. It's not a story you really bring up at, you know, get together and parties, um, never stop forgetting about him, but I just, just stopped talking about him. And so on his 21st birthday, I got the overwhelming urge. I had to do something. I had to honor him, celebrate him in some way. He's still my son. I just wanted to say his name. So I said, let me go back to where it started from. And that was to Live On New York. So here it is, 21 years later, I'm calling up Live On New York. Don't even know what I'm asking <laughs> or what I'm looking for. Explain my story to them. And they said, mom, let me get back to you. I remember I was on my coming home from work and I was pulling into the driveway and I didn't even get all the way back into the driveway with my phone rung. And I picked up just talking to you like, mom, we found the liver recipient and she is now 22 years old and she's having her own baby. I get goosebumps every time I, I hear that because here it is. My son gave the gift of life and now she's able to give to, get, to give the gift of life and it's saving a whole generation. And it's just, how? where do I go? How do I help? What What do I need to do? <laughs> and Live on New York, they let me know that I had an impactful story. Because as you can imagine, five weeks, you're like, what in the world can I say or do to impact anybody? Um, but they talked to me about volunteering for them, sharing my story. And when I started sharing my story, they let me know that I had an impactful story to tell and that I can use this story to help change the minds. And not even that, I don't even want to change your mind. I just want you to start with a conversation in your household with your family. So if my story was able to start the conversation in the household, sign me up. Where do I go? So every platform I was able to get on, every medical staff, every family, every street corner they put me on, I was out there saying my son's name, <laughs> saying Jalil. So, and it, and it gave me a healing that I didn't even know that I needed because after 21 years, you get old, you think you get over it, you know, it's no more crying being done. It's just, no, no. But just sharing my story, seeing the impact it was having, having people come up to me and saying, it was your story why I'm deciding to go ahead and check that box. The healing started, the healing started. So I am grateful to be here. I am grateful I to be with you guys and to announce the winner. So that's my journey. Thank you, Katrina. Thanks for sharing that. And thank you for deciding to support donation um, and making that decision for Jaleel. Um, it really, you really do have one of the most powerful stories I've, I've heard. And I've heard a lot of them in this industry. Um, so thank you. Um, Dave, I'm going to jump back to you. Um, since becoming a recipient, you have worked hard to help others on the transplant wait list in a multitude of ways. Can you explain what inspired you to make a difference and how you're working to achieve this? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Anna. Katrina, what a great story. I, I remember mm -hmm. when we were at the 2023 Wine and Dine Gala, you know, on the bus when we shared our mm -hmm. respective stories together. Mm -hmm. 
And that was just a powerful moment, right? That emotional yeah. connection that we have as transplant community members is just unbelievable. And it set us up for an amazing few days together at that gathering. And uh, we're still connected, right? <laughs> Which is so I cool. We're connected at a that. deep level. And that's the beauty of this award program and the foundation pulling together, you know, people from around the country and the world to say, this is a key thing. And mm -hmm. let's share our stories, right? Because mm -hmm. stories is the emotional connection we crave as humans to begin that dialogue. And you have such a compelling story. I remember we were both moved to tears <laughs> from each other's stories, right? And that is what is the beautiful thing about it. Tears of joy, right? Tears of recognition, yeah, tears of emotion, connection, vulnerability. And that's what I think this awards program and the, the does, right? Is it creates a platform for people to share their stories. So why well, bring that up, Katrina, is great connection. Anna, thanks for the foundation for pulling it together because that's what this does. It builds community. And we know the more we have a robust community of people that are passionate about paying it forward, we know it keeps the direction really powerful in organ donation to get to that zero wait list. And it elevates the trajectory of it so we can get there faster. And that's what connecting communities around is. So to me, when I think about how did we begin helping others, we first started just telling our story. And it comes back to, you know, my wife, Lynn, that it was about a year in. And we said, you know what, how do we start to pay it forward and honor a living donor to make people aware that the liver regenerates? A lot of people didn't know that the liver regenerates, that you could donate your liver when you're alive because the math, they go, it doesn't work. I have one. How do I give it while I'm alive? And just getting the word out that it regenerates, right? So about a year in, uh, Mark and I started telling our story in the media in 2020 and 2021. And then my wife and I started to think, well, how do we create a platform that we would have liked to have had when we were pursuing donation and living organ donation? Because as we know, it can be overwhelming. You get on the transplant list and you're like, okay, what do I do? How do I make it happen? And so we chose to form a foundation uh, called the Living Liver Foundation. It's a 501c3 foundation. And I'm always big into symbolism dates. So we said, well, what day would we launch it? And so we launched it three years to the date that I was on the transplant list. So we launched it February 14th, 2022. And we started to really build around awareness. And then just like when we think about what we do inside the foundation, three pillars that are very, you know, very common amongst transplant um, organizations. Let's first off honor. In this case, we're honoring living donors uh, and the medical professionals that make things happen. Two, educating, you know, educating around not just liver, but kidney and the power and the need of living organ donation and how we as humanity can solve this problem today. <laughs> we have all the technology. We don't need a cure. It's there. We could save literally if transplant centers had capacity and all you transplant centers out there, we want to stress your operating room capacity with living donors stepping forward going, I'm ready to donate a kidney or a liver because we could move that list down to zero. So it was then, you know, educating the public on that. And then hopefully inspiring others to tell stories they heard and amplify them or actually consider becoming a living uh, donor. And so we've done it in a variety of ways. I've loved baseball ever since I've been five or six years old. And so we love the visual metaphor for living organ donation around baseball. The first pitch, the ceremonial first pitch. You know, when you close your eyes, you think, oh, living donor with a baseball. That's kind of like the organ. And let's get the recipient out there and let's throw a first pitch. The donor throws it to the recipient and everyone's out there going, oh my goodness, they're both alive and well. That's awesome. I can see that. It actually works. That's a liver donor. That's a kidney donor. They can see it. And then the power of living organ donation, how it's tied obviously to the deceased organ registry is it's the ultimate double play. If a living donor steps forward and saves one life, they free up an organ from the deceased organ registry to save the life of another. So there in baseball, you got these two amazing, one visual metaphor, another one that's more of just a metaphor. And like, 
wow, let's use the platform of baseball to do it. So we've had great success both at the minor league level uh, and the major league baseball level. And just a couple uh, weeks ago, we had scheduled three uh, living donor awareness games on uh, April 11th, uh, which through the National Day calendar, our foundation had designated as uh, National Living Donor Day. And so we had the Atlanta Braves scheduled on uh, April 10th, uh, then the Cincinnati Reds on April 11th and the Philadelphia Phillies and honored amazing stories uh, of someone that altruistically donated a liver to a three-year-old Curtis Binkley, uh, you know, a kidney donor that saved the life of a lifelong Phillies fan. Just amazing stories, right? And uh, two of the three games were subject to rainouts, but here's what we loved about it, right? We said, that's okay because it's emblematic of transplant. They're going to get rescheduled so we're going to get a second chance to honor these people. So we enjoyed it. We got all kinds of media on the day. And then we're going to get to do it again later in baseball season. So we're like, it's just like transplant. Second chance at life. So we're using the power of baseball to do it. Our dream is zero wait list through uh, the power of baseball. And our hope is that every Major League Baseball franchise will host a living donor awareness game. And we're fast in pursuit of that. We got teams that are stepping forward. So if anyone knows of a, a MLB team that would love to host it. We'd love to partner with you. Uh, so that's one area. And then I'll, I'll leave with uh, one other item that everyone listening can do in the state that they're at, uh, which is in the state of Michigan, we realized that, which is where I'm from, we realized that we had zero of the seven protections in place that the American Kidney Fund ranks for key criteria for living donors. Zero for seven a grade of F on a scale of A to F. And I said, I can't live in a state that has living organ donation laws that make us an F. So uh, Mark and I went to our local senator, Senator Kevin Hertel, and we said, we're going to start with life insurance. Let's get a bill passed here. Uh, and so we passed the bill with Senator Hertel in 2023. It was enacted into law November 7th. That'll be another day I'll never forget, um, where Governor Whitmer signed the legislation that prevents discrimination by insurance companies for life, uh, long-term uh, care insurance and uh, disability uh, insurance uh, in the state of Michigan. You can't cancel it, can't change premiums, can't discriminate in any way. To reduce that friction, uh, Michigan with other moves that we've been a part of has gone to a C and we've got other legislation going. So I'd encourage everyone, this is a key thing you can do, step forward and advocate. Because I knew two things tried to pass a bill. One was I watched Schoolhouse Rock when I was a kid, and I knew how to dance. I'm just a bill sitting here on Capitol Hill. So I knew that, and I tell the senators that. That's all I kind of know. So help me along. And I go, you know what? You've also given me a second tool. You guys have allocated funds here in the state of Michigan, state taxpayer dollars, that have created an amazing high school workbook on how to pass a bill. And I've read that. So thank you. So let's figure out how we get this bill done. <laughs> and they stepped forward. It was near unanimous. So if you are in a state that has less than uh, a B in your state, let's get her done. Let's get more living organ donors there. And hopefully, uh, if you need any help, you can ring me up through Chris Klug Foundation and we'll give you whatever support we can. Thank you, Dave. You have really done some absolutely amazing work. And I have to agree, living donation is going to be the key to solving the wait list. Um, it really yeah. is that missing piece that, you know, the more we continue to develop and push, um, the more we can get that wait list down. And if anyone's Absolutely. interested, CKF is actually working with uh, Colorado representatives right now to get a bill passed in Colorado um, to support sort of living donation, remove some of those barriers. So if you're interested, Amazing. reach out. Um, to myself or the foundation, and we'll happily put you in touch with Dave as well. Um, Katrina, I'm gonna jump back to you. You have also, as you kind of hinted at earlier, have become a extremely passionate about encouraging others to register as donors and give the gift of life. Can you tell us about the work you have done within the community to educate and inspire others and what you have coming up? Oh my God. So, <laughs> um, I have started working really close with Live One New York and, um, 
the one thing that I love to do that I am so, when I first started doing, was so shocked about it. You don't know how many medical doctors and nurses and people in the medical field that have no clue about organ donation. And when it was brought to me, and I'm looking, I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> they don't, I don't, I, how, like how? So one of the things that um, I've become passionate about is doing hospital rounds. They do hospital rounds here where we go to different floors, um, meet from pediatrics to ICU to, you know, different floors where we're able to go and share my story to, I'm literally standing at the nurse's station while all the action has happened behind me. But, you know, a group of nurses or doctors will come and hear my story. And they're like, I never knew that. I didn't know that. Like, there were doctors out there that didn't even know that you, you know, have to be put on a ventilator first before you can even, you know, be considered an organ donor. And sharing my story to different hospitals, I think I've been through every almost every hospital, at least twice, <laughs> sharing my story and just speaking to the medical field about organ donation <clears throat> and standing in a room with them and a nurse is standing up and like, you know what, I'm going to sign up to become an organ donor. And to this day, it just, that has been come, that has become like one of my goals and passions now. Um, I've also, after starting to, um, volunteer with Live On New York and realizing what my passion is. I didn't even know my purpose in life, to be honest. Like I, I kind of just was one that was just out here, just like, just living. Life was lifing, you know, I, but I always knew I wanted to help people. I didn't know how, but I just wanted to help. I didn't know how, what to do. And it was, I was getting frustrated. Like, what am I doing here? What am I doing on this, on this earth? And once I started volunteering, I know now. I know why. I know why Jalil was put into my life. I know what I need to do with his legacy, with what he did to the, for these two babies. I know now what I need to do. And I jumped in head first, ready to share my story. I um, started, I became a, um, a life coach and I um, specialized in grief healing and, um, that became a passion of mine because not only with um, getting awareness out there about organ donation, but it's also dealing with the donor families and finding a new relationship with your loved ones. We can't have the one that we kind of imagine in our head, you know, where he's going to college at, what's his first outfit going to be. You know, I, I didn't have those uh, those uh, stories to tell. So now I had to find a new relationship with them and helping, you know, people that lost loved ones find a new relationship with their loved ones. So after I became um, the Hero Award winner with, with Chris Klug Foundation and I met David and Maria, I just another idea came in <laughs> and it literally happened while I'm sitting with David and Maria and I'm just talking things through with Anna and everybody just sitting at the table. And um, I wanted to start a program called Jalil's Friends. And the point of Jalil's friend, because after speaking to our other award winner, Maria, with her daughter and letting her know that, you know, I was a grief coach um, and I specialize in grief healing. And she said, you know what? I want people to know that, you know, I grieve because she has some um, some things happening. She was like, I grieve not having um, being able to go to school. I grieve losing friends um, when I have to stay in the hospital. I grieve. So and I started thinking like. I don't think about, I, not that I don't think about it, but, you know, I wasn't aware of everything that a transplant candidate has to go through. Just being in the hospital, what they lose, you know, friends fall off because they can't keep up with your journey and what you're going through. And just being in the hospital room and just wanting somebody to connect with, somebody to talk to, somebody to share what they're going through, what they're feeling, what hurts, what to expect. I have this procedure happening tomorrow and I don't know what to expect. And I was like, how great would it be if I can connect transplant candidates with each other through a platform of just communicating, just asking questions, just 
gaining connections. You up all night in the hospital room. She's up all night in the hospital room. You guys are going through the same situation. Why not connect? So my good friend David here <laughs> gave me the best advice that I, David, so you know, I carry that. And I tell that story all the time. He told me, you know what? Just step into the hallway Mm because you're always thinking about, well, what if this and what if that? And if it doesn't work and if I don't get anybody (laughs) and that stops us from creating these great things that, you know, can help or, you know, your passion or whatever. It stops us from moving forward with that. And David said, just don't even worry about anything else. Just first step step into the hallway. You have all these doors that just there and they'll start to open up as you continue to walk. Don't worry about what's behind them. Just, just do it. So David, (laughs) I stepped into the hallway. So now I am in the process of revamping my website and I have um, someone that's actually working on a platform just under grief to Hill, where it's kind of, I, I say it's like a Facebook platform. Mm-hmm. It's um, they can go in, they can connect with each other, they can leave messages. I can, you know, have certain questions of the day, and they can comment under it, send pictures, and just have a connection. So I'm at the beginning stages, <laughs> but I just wanted to show, not even to um, acknowledge those friends, but just to show what this did for me. What being a part and being this Hero Award winner and being a part of the Chris Club Foundation did for me, it started a passion in me that I am ready to see through. And although I'm a donor mom, I want to help the transplant candidates that we're doing all this for. <laughs> this is this is who we're doing it for. So I didn't know how else I can help them as besides telling my story, but it's to give a connection. What a great way to have someone that lives in Colorado to connect with someone that lives in New York that's going through the same thing. So that's where I'm at. And that's what this has done for me. I'm forever Mm. grateful. And this is a part of my journey now, telling this story Mm. of becoming a hero award winner with Chris Club Foundation. Mm. Thank you. That's beautiful. That was amazing. Yes. And we cannot wait to support Jaleel's friends in any way possible. Um, and yeah, it really is. Connections is key and having that support network is so critical for both sides, donor families and mm-hmm. transplant recipients. You don't get through it without, you know, mm-hmm. your people and nobody mm-hmm. can, can see what you're going through better than a transplant recipient as a transplant recipient or as a donor family, mm-hmm. as a donor family. Um, mm-hmm. so yes. And that leads me, you actually segued right into my next question. Um, So I'm going to ask you both. Um, After becoming a member of the CKF family, we like to call it a family. um, We're Mm -hmm. nationwide and we, you know, we really help support and hold each other up. Um, So hence why the family Um, and accepting the award at our 2023 Wine and Dine. What does being a CKF award winner mean to you? (laughs) Do you want me to go first, David? Yeah, go for it. Roll with it. (laughs) <laughs> First, I am so grateful and appreciative of being an award winner. It gave me an opportunity, one, to travel to Aspen, Colorado. <laughs> Let me just say that right there. I don't think that I've ever would have given myself that opportunity because what do I, I a skier? I'm not going out there to ski because that's all you think about in Aspen is <laughs> going out there to ski. But it gave me an opportunity that I am going to take with for the rest of my life. It, it, that experience by itself was amazing. And I talk about it all the time to this day. Um, it put a spark and a passion in me that I didn't even know that was there to connect with David and Anna and Maria and everybody on the Chris Club Foundation members. It, I'm getting chills and emotional, so forgive me, but it's an experience that it's it's like no other. And number two, Jalil's name is now being said in Colorado. It very well <laughs> <So> is. <laughs> he has went across the country. <laughs> and it's like, I'm sitting here for 21 years, not even able to say his name. And now I'm saying his name in Colorado. So, but... 
it has been an, an amazing experience and I will forever take this experience with me. Um, my son's legacy it has now grown um, and I'm appreciative and grateful and it gave me a new community. I have a community here in New York um, with Live on New York, um, but now I have a community in Colorado, in Oregon, in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken, David. You got it, and absolutely. <laughs> the community that it, it, it just keeps growing. So it, it has done a lot for me in this past year. Grateful forever. Thank you, Katrina. That was amazing. I'm so glad we could give you the just an opportunity to to be a part of it. And Dave, I'm going to pass it to you. And you did. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn and I had an amazing experience, right? You, it's aptly described as a family because we could feel that connection there in the community of people that are so passionate about the mission. So not only the foundation, but your supporters that come and contribute their time, their resources, their talents. You can feel it. And you could feel it at that wine and dine gala and all the events that surround it. So we just had a magical time. It's about connection and community, right? And so we're grateful for that because we now are forever a part of that. And we know that when we're connected to others, it amplifies the impact that we collectively can have. And I'll give you a specific example about a cool opportunity with the silent auction that was there. Um, there was Chris and Lorraine Steele, uh, who had donated a special item, which was turn to with a Hall of Fame hero of mine, Alan Trammell, who I grew up, a Detroit Tiger. We actually purchased that. And then we got to experience that February 17th of 2024 as part of our foundation to honor Mark, to meet Alan Trammell and use it to amplify the message. So not only did we have a great time there, it's reverberating out because of the community that you pulled together and the incredible idea of Chris Steele, who came up with the concept and his wife to amplify it, Lorraine, that just made all these cool things happen, it reverberates out. So I love how the community can amplify. And we had a great time doing that. And it's then helping us propel our baseball mission uh, forward, uh, which is really neat. And then I had an amazing experience with the CKF New York City Marathon team. I was so grateful to be a part of that. That was amazing. Uh, you know, November 5th uh, in New York City going 26.2 uh, with the crew raising money for the foundation. It fulfilled an amazing dream of mine to run another marathon uh, post-transplant. And I did it uh, in honor of my brother-in-law, Mark, uh, and all living donors and donor families, because each step I took, each mile I traversed, I was thinking about someone there and the support was amazing. Hannah, you were great. Jesse was great. All the other runners was incredible. And I got inscribed on uh, the back of my medal. Um, Mark, Dave, powered by Mark. And it's a shorthand way of a thing that I always say. And it's what I believe as I honor him and others is his last name's Didus. My last name is Galbensky. And we happened to have our surgery. We're from Motown, Detroit, uh, at Henry Ford Health. So here's what I always say. I say, I'm Galbensky, powered by Divus, my donor, but serviced and tuned up by Henry Ford Health. And so <laughs> I got to demonstrate that over 26.2 in New York City. So grateful for that opportunity to build awareness, raise funds, be a part of a community. So um, hopefully that will continue. You guys are great advocates of being active. I love demonstrating that. And then I know you guys will be there as well uh, at the Transplant Games of America coming up in July. Another great biannual uh, gathering of transplant community members that you guys support and are a key part of. So in short, it's about community. It's about connection. And it's about how we can use that to amplify our collective message and so grateful to forever be a part of your family. So thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. I love your saying. I have to say that I've never, Jesse and I were watching the marathon and I have never seen anybody speed up as they went through the course other than Dave. His time just kept getting faster. And Jesse and I are like, what magic is he using? <laughs> but 
it was amazing. <laughs> so yes, it will definitely be one of my most memorable years. Um, but yes, let's dive into announcing uh, our 2024 CKF Award winners who will be taking over the title for the next year um, before he goes on to the next. Not that anyone ever loses their title, but <laughs> they will be the 2024 CKF Award winners. I want to start by saying a really big thank you to everybody that nominated um, for this year's awards. We had 49 nominations, making it our biggest year yet. And they were absolutely incredible and inspiring. And we wanted to award every single one of you um, something to say thank you. I personally want to say thank you because re reading all of your stories made me so inspired for the next year to make a difference and, and keep fighting the good fight to eliminate the weight. Um, so if you weren't successful this year, please remember you can always resubmit next year. Um, every year is different. And so it, you always in with the chance. And this year, every single category was split by one point. So it really was a tight run, a uh, tight race. Um, so without further ado, uh, Katrina, would you like to kick us off with our Hero Award winner? I am super excited to pass the baton over to the next Hero Award winners. The 2024 Hero Award winners are living donors, Mark and Lynn Scotch. Woo! Congratulations. Woo! Welcome so to the family. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Okay, Dave, take it away. Yeah, really pumped about it, right? The 20, let me do a little drum roll, right? Woo. <laughs> All right, the 2024 Bounce Back Give Back Award winner is heart transplant recipient, Denise Redeker. Congrats, Woo. Denise. Woo. Hey, Denise. Okay, and as Maria could not be here with us today, I am going to announce the 2024 Community Champion winner is caregiver Abby Gray. Yay, Abby! Woo! Woo! Congrats, Abby. <laughs> so we will be reaching out to each of you to start planning your trips to Aspen, Colorado this summer for our Wine and Dine Gala um, to accept your awards. So thank you all who nominated again. They're a big thank you to our 2023 CKF award winners for all of their hard work and inspir inspiring us and everybody else in our community. And thank you for joining us today and sharing your incredible stories. Um, and yes, that is it for today's session. Um, if you have any questions or want to learn more about anything we do, head to chrisklugfoundation.org. If you'd like to Get in touch with either of our winners here today or Maria. Um, just reach out to us at chrisklugfoundation.org and we will happily put you in touch with them. Um, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and live life, give life.